So last week I went to the Belgian premiere of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the final Indiana Jones adventure. Yeah, that's a sad realization. Um, yeah, so it was a premiere event uh, at our local cinema and they offered us um, popcorn, a drink and some goodies. Let's look uh, inside the goodie bag. So yeah. It is a real bag, <laughs> um, a bag branded Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny. Not really something you'd expect Indiana Jones to, to have as a bag. Um, what's inside? A world map of Indiana Jones locations, something you can frame and or hang on your wall. Nice enough. Uh, there was a lanyard. A Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny lanyard to hang and or hold your key. Uh, there was the aforementioned popcorn in a Indiana Jones cup holder. Nice enough. Uh, <laughs> some popcorn still in the bag. <laughs> One week uh, old popcorn. Um, here's my ticket stub. I was. Uh, actually very happy to um, get, get a physical stub. I mean, in the past I collected these. Uh, great memories. Uh, every stub represents a uh, cinematic uh, treasure or a memory. Uh, but uh, in, in past years they opted for a digital, uh, an email, uh, something non-tangible anymore. And so I was very happy to get my uh, tickets to hold. Uh, we got a N Nutella cookie as well that's gone can't show you that um, and then of course yeah the the huge poster you see behind me um, that one that was also no oh, can't even frame it hold it in the frame um, lens flare JJ Abrams would approve um, yeah so the poster was included as well in the uh, gift bag so in all for let's say what was it 21 euro 21 dollars per ticket which is a seven, six, six, seven dollar difference with a normal ticket, I'd say you get your money's worth, especially since there's a, a Coke included. A Coke can set you back four uh, on its own in cinema. A popcorn is at least four or five. So yeah, you're in the green already and then you get the poster, uh, the, uh, the, the, world, the world map, the lanyard and the, uh, the bag. So yeah. In all quite nice and then I also picked up this was not uh, included but this was uh, additional uh, an additional purchase uh, a tin popcorn holder also branded Indiana Jones and the dial of destiny uh, my wife uh, ate most of the popcorn I just wanted this one there was also which I missed apparently there was also a uh, fedora uh, popcorn holder so really popcorn inside a fedora uh, plastic fedora of course but I missed that one so hopefully um, I might be going back next week uh, to catch an IMAX uh, screening and hopefully I'll be able to get the uh, the fedora with the popcorn of course one question remains how's the movie how is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny um, the can reviews were quite harsh they broke my heart uh, now I had the chance to uh, watch the movie with my own eyes um spoilers of course disclaimer spoiler warning stop the video right here if you haven't seen a movie if you don't care about spoilers you can continue watching this video uh i could give you my opinion just off the top of my head but then it will be well not very coherent just rambling of a madman so i've um written down a official review <clears throat> here goes the first hour of Dial of Destiny is pretty meh. Then it picks up the pace, introduces classic Indiana Jones tropes, creepy animals, dank caves, gets good mileage out of the MacGuffin and finishes things off nicely with a perfect ending. Along the route there are a few fun quips by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, some terrible action scenes, some excellent action scenes, great musical cues, thank you for the music Maestro Williams, go and enjoy your well-earned retirement. A Wilhelm scream, a sadly underused Antonio Banderas, and a tear shed by Indiana Jones himself. That's a first for the series, and the reason is genuinely touching, even unsettling. 
James Mangold's Walk the Line is a masterpiece. Dial of Destiny isn't, but it is made with sincere, obvious love for the franchise. It never resorts to cheap tricks or hollow manipulations. You could, however, remove Ethan Isidore, or Isidore from the movie and lose nothing of value. That's not a diss to Mr. Isidore, mind you, who is a fine actor. The character just adds next to nothing to the story. Matt Smigelson is amazing as always, and the de-aging used to recreate a 1940s indie is stupendously effective. It's quite evident how proud the wizards at Lucasfilm and ILM are, because there's a solid 20 plus minutes of digital Harrison Ford. Compare this to, say, the few seconds of Princess Leia in Rogue One, and you can see how the tech has improved. I can't believe we'll never get another new Indiana Jones movie, a series that had been so good to us for the past 42 years. I will miss that fictional character. I don't want him to go away, but here we are. Take a deep bow and a tip of the hat to the fedora. If adventure has a name, it was, it is, and it will always be Indiana Jones. Thank you. Mr. Lucas, Mr. Spielberg and Mr. Ford. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the fifth... <laughs> so last week I went to the Belgian premiere of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the fifth... 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 